Welcome in everybody to another edition of Argo Sports Insider. I'm Will Kennedy, your host, and every time here on the show, we like to spend some time highlighting what's going on at the University of West Florida in our athletics department. We've got 10 national championships, more than 100 conference championships, lots to be proud of here for Argo Nation. We got into December and it was time to actually start playing sports again with basketball getting back on the court here at the Fieldhouse and scheduled to make some stops around the Gulf South Conference as well. Unfortunately, as we all know in this time of COVID, sometimes the best laid plans go awry. That has happened. We've played some games, not all of the four games we were scheduled for. So basketball, a little bit of a holding pattern right now. We did have a chance to catch up with men's basketball head coach Jeff Burkhammer to talk about the one game he and the Argos got in. Well, Coach, we're having to do uh, this virtual style interview this for this particular episode of the show, but you guys have gotten a game in. And I think I sent you an email and I said, hey, the good news is we're going to end December undefeated. But it's been it's been a wild stretch of a couple of weeks. You guys are supposed to play four, you get one in, and now we, we're shut down until the new year. Yeah, it was disappointing and really frustrating for our players. And we, we thought we were playing AUM, then we thought we were playing West Georgia, then we had it set up to play Montebello and – uh, just different circumstances didn't allow any of it to happen. And we'd had a really, really good week of practice. I thought our players were excited about playing, uh, getting two more games in before they leave for the holidays. And really thought we were in a good place. Uh, practice wise, we'd been very good in practice. Guys were excited and, you know, coming off a, a good win over Lee. Uh, so we're disappointed we didn't get to play the games. You guys, I think the last show we did, you were getting ready to play at Shorter. That game did not happen. You did get a chance to come home and have that home game with Lee. Let's talk about that game. We'll take a look at the highlights as we do. Uh, really, you know, what stands out from that game is obviously Tariq McAlpin and the way he played and 32 points, 10 rebounds. And you were telling me after the game, this is something you know you can get from this young man. Well, Tariq has worked very, very hard. Uh, he had a terrific summer, really worked on his shooting. Uh, just got in the gym, got out in the park, wherever he could go work out, he was working. And I'm really proud of him and happy for him. GSC Player of the Week. Um, you know, for his efforts and just thought he had a terrific game, was uh, under control, took great shots, got other people's shots, rebounded the ball. So he did more than just score it. Uh, but he is a guy I think we'll, we'll rely on this year as a guy that uh, can score the ball for us and get a lot of things done. When we talk in the preseason, you know, we, we talk in hypotheticals and you got your five guys back and you kind of know what they can do a little bit because you've seen them play last year and you're hoping for improvement there. And then you're bringing in a bunch of new guys. Based on one game, and it's a small sample size, obviously, you know, from your five, especially, we just talked about three. Are you kind of seeing what you want to see from them or what you expected to see? Well, Cameron Cox gave us just exactly what he needs to give us. Uh, great leadership, took care of the ball, got us into offense, uh, guarded well, uh, didn't turn the ball over. So he took care of his role really well. Brett Carter made shots. Uh, Daniel Sofield made shots and really rebounded well. I think he had 11 rebounds on the game from – in the three spot, Kelvin, we talked about, and then uh, Connor Flanagan. Connor, unfortunately, got in some foul trouble. His minutes were good when he was in there, but he just got into foul trouble. Uh, and we expect him to, to stay out of foul trouble and, and give us great minutes. So, you know, those five guys really came in and played well and played with experience like we expect. Coach, this is going to air uh, this show on December 24th, so Christmas Eve. Let's talk Christmas for a second. For you, young Jeff Burkhammer. What was the best gift that you got? What's, or what's one that stands out for you from a Christmas morning? Well, shoot, every, every, every Christmas was a new ball or a new basketball. You get those inside outdoor, inside outside basketballs or a leather ball if you're playing inside was the best for me. Everything at that time of the year was about basketball. So uh, always looking forward to getting a new ball every year and then having a chance to go get in the gym. And then were you, were you the kid, you know, that – could get any sleep the night before or were, or were you up, you know, up all night waiting for the sun to rise or whatever time you were allowed to come and hit those presents? Well, I think it, it depended a little bit if I was with my cousins or not. If I was with my cousins and we, we were trying to stay up, if if we weren't with them, then I probably slept a little bit more. But Christmas morning was always an exciting time, a great time with family and a great time uh, to get up and find presents under the tree and kind of see what was there. And I'm sure it is for a lot of kids today. I hope they have a great Christmas morning. Well, Coach, happy Christmas to you and to the family. And I know we were looking forward to a couple games before the break, and uh, we'll get those in eventually and have those on Cox Sports TV when they're at home. And, and we're excited from watching that first game and broadcasting that first game. Looking forward to some big things from you guys. So we'll be talking to you again soon. Happy holidays. See you in 2021. <laughs> well, I think people are going to enjoy watching us play. Hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and have a great New Year. 
All right, coming up next on the program, we will check in with women's basketball coach Stephanie Lawrence Young right here on Argo Sports Inside. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. The Florida Lottery is proud to support education by contributing billions of dollars to Florida schools and awarding countless Bright Future scholarships so Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at FLALottery.com. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. This portion of Argo Sports Insider is brought to you by Penn Air Federal Credit Union, Jenny King, Hill Kelly Dodge, High Point Hotel Group, and the Florida Lottery. Welcome back into Argo Sports Insider. A little something different this week, and we knew we'd have to do this eventually. We made it all the way to the last show of the fall semester before we had to do a remote interview. Coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton with the women's basketball team is here with us. Uh, Coach, this is a, it's an unusual situation. We've touched on it on several times in the show through the fall here. You guys had four games scheduled for the month of December. You got half of them in. And then, you know, the testing around the league, the Gulf South Conference, and it's not just Division II. It's not just our conference across basketball. It's been hard to get games played. Yeah, we've been fortunate to get two of the four in before the Christmas break. So, um, you know, I felt good about us going into this weekend. And then, you know, you get the last minute call uh, that the game has been postponed and, you know, luckily for us, we were able to negotiate it out, and we've got these two games that we're missing this weekend rescheduled, one for January and hopefully one for February, and uh, we'll make these games up in the new year, but uh, it's just one of those years. You guys get, did get the chance to get back on the court. Uh, first game was a home game. You know, you got, got the chance to play in front of the fans that were there, and there, there was a hand a smattering is, is how we'll put it, but that first game was a good one, and you got a chance, you know, after practicing and stopping and starting in the preseason to get to see your team play. And they played well. You guys put up 94 points. Yeah, I was super nervous going into the game as a coach, you know, because we I just didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know how good we could be. I didn't uh, have a really good grasp of what our rotations would look like, what our substitution patterns would look like, just because we had not had a lot of practices with our whole team together. And uh, so going into that game, I was a bit nervous, but we come out and shot the ball extremely well. We handled uh, shoulders pressure extremely well. Um, you know, we just – had a lot of offensive possessions that game. And because we shot the ball so well, we scored 94, which in the moment put us as the number one uh, scoring team in the nation uh, going into our second game. So if we just stopped the season right there, we would have been there, we <laughs> right there. You guys went on the road after the game and the win over Shorter, had to take on a pretty good Lee basketball team. And I know it didn't turn out the way you wanted. What did you pick up and kind of learn from the first road trip? Well, you know, the first road trip was really different this year, you know, um, you know, this is the first year I've ever done a seating chart on the bus. Um, I had to really think about our rooming list, who was rooming with who and try to, you know, prevent the spread of a potential a virus, you know, if someone was to get sick on the road. Uh, we had to think of, of rethink meals and how meal planning and how to sit at those meals. 
So being on the road was totally different this year. Um, and then you step into the game environment where the locker room uh, is different. The benches are different. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's just a weird, a weird situation. It's not our normal basketball uh, situation. But the nice thing was, is when we got to Cleveland, Tennessee, I mean, obviously gracious host at, at Lee University. I mean, they uh, were great with our fans. They were great with our team and our staff. Um, you know, and then of course, game time, we got to play the number one team on the, on the east side of our division. Uh, and they showed that they're number one team. This was their first game coming into the season. They shot the ball extremely well. Um, and we just seem to not be able to put the ball in the basket. Um, but, you know, I think looking hindsight, looking back on the game, we wind up winning the second half of that basketball game. We just dug ourselves in a big hole the first half and couldn't dig our way out. But, um, but again, for the first road trip and under the conditions that our team has been in with interruptions, I thought it was a good showing. Let's talk Christmas because your trees behind you, we're going to air on, on Christmas Eve here with this show for you. So young, young Stephanie, were you the kind of kid who was up all night anxious for to come down and get those Christmas presents or could you fall asleep? Um, no, obviously very anxious, you know, waiting on Santa to come, you know, listening closely to see if you Santa on your roof uh, or hear those uh, jingles from his sleigh. You know, there are plenty of nights where, uh, you know, plenty, plenty of Christmas nights where my brothers and I sneak out of our room, kind of look around the corner. Santa hadn't been here yet, so we've got to scurry back to bed. Uh, but always, always, always waking up before the sun comes up. You know, you see the twinkle of the Christmas tree lights in the dark and all the presents under the tree and just uh, and then the mad chaos that exudes after that, right? Ripping, ripping gifts and, and papers off and, and just going crazy and then potentially crashing by 10 a.m. You've got two young boys there. What, what do they want for Christmas? What kind of what's on their list? Well, you know, Bobby, who's 11 right now, is really into the Xbox. And so if he can get an Xbox gold membership card for the for the future year, that'll take him through the year. That will be amazing for him. Uh, and Toby's been asking for a drone and some uh, wireless headphones. But the big gift that Toby wants, and I just don't know if Santa's going to be able to deliver it because I don't know how he delivers animals. <laughs> but uh, Toby, if it was his dream would have a puppy. And uh, so I'm not quite sure Santa's going to deliver that this year, but, you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Coach, uh, congratulations on the one win. We look for many more as you close in on 200. I think two away from that now. Um, happy holidays. Have Merry Christmas to you and the family, and we'll talk to you again soon. Hey, Merry Christmas, especially to all our Argo fans. Know that we miss you. We think about you. We'd love to see you in the field house. We're keeping our fingers crossed January and February that maybe we'll get to see you in the field house. A Merry Christmas, everyone. All right, coming up next year on the program, we will check in with football coach Pete Shinnick, talk a little holidays with him too, and, and kind of wrap up the fall for the football team right here on Argo Sports Inside. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's you. I felt this way before, you know it's you. It's you. Those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's turf. Andrews Institute, for those who move. We've delivered hot, fresh, made to order burgers to your table every day since 1950. Now, we're just delivering them a little farther. Right to your front door. Guess you could call them special deliveries. Delivery has arrived at Whataburger. Use our app or order at whataburger.com. Welcome back into Argo Sports Insider. We're here at beautiful Penn Air Field. Head football coach Pete Shinnick from the defending 
and still defending still. UWF national yeah. champions is with us here. Coach, as we air this show, Christmas Eve 2020, it's been a long time, it feels like, <laughs> since you played, because it has been yeah. a year and a couple days. But that last game, we still remember it well. So let's kind of start there. Christmas is a time to reminisce. Let, let's is. talk about, you know, a lot has gone on since then, but I'm sure you and I know a lot of the fans and the players still kind of think back to that day with fond memories. Oh, we do. And, you know, obviously the recap that we were able to do and uh, get out there, that was a blast and have watched that a couple of times. And then we have family members come into town and they're like, we want to watch the national championship. So watching you again and going through that, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, leading up to that, even, uh, you know, on social media there, we hit up the, you know, your iconic call of the Valdosta Anthony game. Johnson <laughs> Valdosta touchdown there. Uh, it, you know, obviously one year ago, this time uh, we're getting ready to play Ferris State for the second time in three years having an opportunity to go to the national championship game all of that is just you know tremendously fond memories well you guys have had your fall in and we kind of haven't had a chance to catch up with you since you had your scrimmage and I know it was different very different than what we would normally expect kind of how you know summarize the fall for us and kind of how things went and how they wrapped up yeah, I give our guys a tremendous amount of credit, just really proud of them to be able to handle this uh, diversity of practice conditions. You know, one day we come out uh, and the guy that was starting is now sitting out because of contact tracing. Uh, the next day, uh, you know, another guy is. We had, you know, some positions, you know, almost uh, lose three, four guys at different times, depending on what took place. So I, I'm, I'm really proud of how our guys handled just how difficult that was and to really show up and uh, the practices that we had, extremely competitive. I love our team, love where we're at right now. Now we just got to keep working through this. What can we expect from you, you guys in the spring though? The spring, it's going to be probably a more uh, and, you know, we're all obviously waiting. What's the next COVID, you know, um, guidelines that are coming out? We're going to follow everything that the CDC puts out and what the state of Florida and what the University of West Florida uh, puts out for us. But our desire is really to have uh, probably a section that would be considered what a normal spring ball would be. But we're working on some outside competition versus uh, a couple of programs. And I think that would kind of be the highlight of the spring because, it's been since um, December uh, of 2019 since we last went against somebody. If we could get a couple of those scrimmages in, that would be fantastic. And then really what we wanna do once that phase concludes, um, if we can have an on-campus scrimmage where we could get some people out, if that was allowed, we'd love to do that. Let me ask you a quick question because Christmas Eve is when we air. So as a kid, Pete Shinnick, was he able to go to sleep the night before? Or were you one of those who was up all night waiting for the itching to get down the stairs and get the present? Yeah, you know, I was always I was always waiting. My mom and dad did a really good job of, you know, bringing out some stuff. And then there was always some stuff that wasn't wrapped. So you saw that pretty good. Uh, but then also, you know, part of that growing up was, you know, did dad have a game that day? Yep. <laughs> Okay, because, you, you know, now it would be, you'd get a double bonus. You'd get up, get to do some presents, and then you'd get to go to a game. Uh, so we did that quite a few times when he was with the Raiders. So that was fun as well. For those that don't know, Pete's dad coached uh, many years in the NFL and, and still holds the all-time career interceptions record for a linebacker. Best gift that you ever got as a kid that stands out in your mind? What was the one? You know, a lot of people bicycle, other things. Sure. There... Sure. Stretch um, Armstrong, right? now. Well, you no, know, I'm, I'm going to go, and it's classic. It's iconic. I got the Evil Knievel wind-up oh. uh, jump motorcycle, yes. man. I mean, we wore that thing out. I, 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 th I, th I think that thing, we grinded those gears, uh, you know, within about uh, four months of having that thing. Did you and your brothers ever have electronic football? And if you did, did you ever get it to work for we more did. than one play? No, I mean, that's, yeah, they're still vibrating around, uh, you know, going in circles. And all my guys would fumble, and it, it was bad. Yeah, but we did have that. Um, never quite understood that game, but, you know, we'd pull it out, let that thing vibrate, and go from there. As a coach, you can design the play, and, and much like real life, and then it all goes to heck as soon as oh, the ball yeah. is snapped. And we got, I think, we got, like, the second version of it, because then you had the styrofoam ball. You could actually try to throw and all that type. It still didn't work. Coach, appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you and the Thank family. We will look to forward to UWF football in the spring. Coming up next here on the program, we'll dive into spending some time with some student athletes. This week it is women's golf, and we'll spend a little time with men's basketball as well right here on Argo Sports Insider. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? 
Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at penair.org slash about us. This portion of Argo Sports Insider is brought to you by Coca-Cola, Baptist Healthcare and the Andrews Institute, Publix, Whataburger, and CPC Office Technologies. Welcome back into the Fieldhouse Lobby here at the University of West Florida. Lots of trophies around. We love to see that. And we're looking for the opportunity coming up here in the spring to hopefully add some more hardware to the collection. We like to spend some time with our student athletes here on the program as well, getting to know them a little bit better away from the court of play, away from their field of play or the course in this case. This week we are checking in with Solange Gomez with UWF Women's Golf and Cameron Cox from the men's basketball team. Hello, my name is Solange Gomez. I'm from the women's golf team. I'm from Ecuador and I'm a redshirt sophomore. Being apart from my family and friends is just very hard at the beginning, but being surrounded by people that support me and having a great team is just, it has been easier. So it's not as bad as I thought at the beginning. So it's good. I like American music since I'm little, so that's good. But I also listen to Spanish music a lot. And then the food is very, very different. But it's not bad, so <laughs> it's okay. So my favorite food is probably empanadas. I don't get them here, but I can do them myself. So that's good. And then I love steak. I love pasta. I'm a marketing major and I chose it because I, first I wanted to do a psychology major, but it wasn't for me. And I like business and stuff and marketing really relates to how the psychology plays into the business world and how to get people to buy your product and how to trick people's minds. So it's, I like it. Oh, a good song that hypes me up every time is I Like It by Cardi B, Bad Bunny and J Balvin is a really good song for me. You know all the lyrics? I know all the lyrics. <laughs> My favorite show is probably Money Heist. It's a um, Spanish series. And then I like, the last show I watched is probably Outer Banks. Really good. Okay, my two favorite restaurants, fast food restaurants is Chick-fil-A for sure. I get um, chicken nuggets with fries and then um, sugar-free lemonade. And Panda Express, I get white rice, um, black pepper chicken, and a side of spring rolls. That's my meal. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Cameron Cox, senior point guard here at UWF. I'm on the basketball team. What's going on? I landed here because uh, I actually, when I graduated high school, I did a year of prep school at the United States Naval Academy Prep School. Um, I made it about three-fourths through the year, um, decided I didn't want to go down that path. Um, coach Benitor, assistant coach here, started contacting me and, you know, ever since then I've been organized. Probably like the food places, like I'm real big in like the little food trucks, food truck festivals, uh, you know, all the little hole-in-the-wall food spots, you know, me and my teammates, we enjoy doing that, you know, getting good eats, hanging out. 
gonna sound crazy, but if I walk in and there's no air conditioning, I know they're making good food in there. I can't lie to you. Every place I've been to, it had no air conditioning, I was hot. Food was good, so. Man, that's easy, that's soul food from Atlanta. So, you know, we, you know, we're big on soul food back home. You know what I'm saying? My family likes soul food, so I like it too. Honestly, my family, but I would also say, you know, probably just a change of pace. Pensacola, obviously, you know, a little smaller city. Atlanta's pretty healthy, skelter, you know, a lot of stuff going on. You know, always in the mix, but um, yeah, mainly my family and just the pace of everything going on. That's that's easy right now. Everybody knows little Baby's on top, for sure, for sure. Probably 21 Savage, something like that, just because I mean, you know, that's that's real like hard, dark music. You know, get your, get your mind in the zone. Obviously, like I said, I got to throw some little Baby in there somewhere. I play a lot of PS4. Um, I edit videos on the side. I like to listen to music. Um, really just hang out with my friends. Like a lot of times I just sit in my room and do nothing. My video game of choice is Call of Duty, but uh, if you know the game Fall Guys, that's probably one of my favorite games. You know, it makes me stupid frustrated, but I love it. My major is business information systems. And uh, the reason I chose that is my dad, you know, he's a real tech junkie. Uh, you know, he kind of got me on it. I interned with him for two years. And um, honestly, just me paying attention to how everything's kind of going virtual. You know, I was like thinking I might as well, you know, go into something like that. So chose that. I'm gonna say by far LeBron James. And the reason why I say that, obviously, is because I grew up with him in my generation. So I don't really have that much of a comparison. Um, the last dance over the summer showed me that Jordan's obviously great, but LeBron's still playing, you know. The Cam meal obviously is going to be paid for by my parents because I got the Chick-fil-A app on the phone. I'm going to load the I'm gonna load the card up with my mom's money. I'm going to go get a number one with cheese, no pickles, and two Polynesian sauces. Some of the best advice we'll ever hear right there from Cameron Cox. If you're looking for a hole-in-the-wall place to eat, check the AC first. We've got a lot coming your way in the next semester. This is our last show for 2020. We're ready to move into 2021, as we know you all are as well. Don't forget the Argo Armada app is the best way to keep track of what's going on here with UWF Athletics. The news feed's fantastic, kind of brings all our social media feeds together so you can see the latest of what's going on. The scheduling obviously will be very important. It's the same information you would find on GoArgos.com. We do have a cool new thing we want to share with you here on the show. We're not sure about crowd sizes for basketball. So far, it's been very limited. We're hoping to expand that out. And definitely when we get into baseball, softball, have the opportunity for our Argo fans to spend a little more time with us. But if not, if you're in another part of the country or we can't let you in right now, we've got something for you. Check out our fan cutout program. We wish that all our Argo fans could join us in the field house to cheer on our basketball teams this season. But we certainly hope to keep the Argo spirit alive for our student athletes, even if you can't be here, with our Argo fan crowd cutouts. With a donation of $30 to UWF athletics programs, you can have your photo cutout appear in the stands during UWF games this winter and spring. Want the whole family to join in on the fun? Cutouts are $30 each, and if you purchase three, the fourth is free. We'll even put your beloved pet on a cutout. Visit GoArgos.com for more information on how to get your cutout and order one today. What a great Christmas present idea there. Get a cutout for yourself. And remember, take a close picture, and we, we will put your pet in there. You can wear a goofy hat, kind of whatever you want to do. But we want you here at the game in whatever capacity we can find a way to get you here. Have a wonderful holiday season. We hope to see you at a live event in the spring. We'll definitely see you here with Argo Sports Insider every other week as we start things up again in the spring. Looking forward to 2021 right there with you. Go Argos.